If actions speak louder than words, then Republicans appear to think the only important issue facing America is impeaching President Biden, not the millions who will be left in the dust if the government shuts down October 1st. If a deal is not reached and federal funding expires, among the consequences, three million kids could lose access to child care. This week, Democrats introduced the Child Care Stabilization Act to prevent that from happening, allocating $16 billion to fund child care yearly for the next five years. The plan would prevent parents from leaving the workforce to care for their kids. It would save an estimated 200,000 child care workers from losing their jobs. The hurdle, of course, getting Republicans to support it. With us now, California Congresswoman Sarah Jacobs. Representative Jacobs, I want you to explain what is at stake here for both families and the U.S. economy as a whole. Yeah, well, so in 2021, when it was very clear to everyone that the child care sector was about to collapse, uh, Democrats came together and in the American Rescue Plan passed emergency child care funding that allowed the child care sector to stay open and to be able to serve families through the pandemic. Now, that emergency funding is about to expire in two weeks uh, if we don't do something. And that's why it's so important that we pass this Child Care Stabilization Act. So as you said, three million kids could lose access to child care in California alone. That's 80,000 kids who would lose access mm -hmm. to child care. We'd have workers uh, not being able to go to work because they don't have the child care they need. Uh, small businesses that often, you know, is women and, and women of color who run these child care small businesses would go out of business. Uh, and we already lose around a trillion dollars a year in GDP because of parents not being able to get the care they need to be able to go to work. And that number would only get exponentially worse if this funding isn't passed. Republicans last year, of course, let the child tax credit expire. Here's President Biden this week addressing the consequences of that. Take a listen. MAGA Republican Congress did not support continuing that, expended, that extended tax cut. And this week we learned what happened as a result of their position. About three million more kids are now living in poverty because we've cut that again. I'm fighting to restore the child tax credit and once again lift these kids out of poverty. Congressman, I want to ask you two, two questions, which is one, just sort of any chance of the child tax credit being restored. And, and two, how do you contend with the fact that policies are put in place? They work. They are shown to be effective at doing the very thing that people like you say they will do. And then you have Republican colleagues say, not good enough, not going to extend it. Look, we are still looking for any way we can to extend uh, the child tax credit and, and put it back in place. Uh, we saw how successful it was. Um, but unfortunately, as you said, it looks like Republicans have no interest in even coming to the table and talking to us about what might be possible. You know, we have not heard a single Republican talk about this child care cliff. We've not heard a single Republican talk about the child care, the child tax credit uh, expiring and all these kids going back into poverty. Uh, and to me, it makes no sense. You'd think lifting kids out of poverty would be the most uh, basic thing that we as a government could agree to do, not to mention all of my colleagues like to talk about fiscal responsibility. Will the federal government actually save $6 for every $1 that we invest in quality early childhood programs? Um, so this would actually save us money in the long term. Uh, we see that it works. We saw that it worked. And to me, it is absolutely ludicrous that I have colleagues who refuse to even come to the table and talk about reinstating it. I, I want to just Part of what I want to do is paint a, a full picture for our viewers of, of what is happening to kids in America, particularly what is happening to low-income kids, because states started rolling back Medicaid coverage this year, causing over one million kids to lose health care across 38 states. That is just so far. A lot of this is bureaucracy. It's technicalities. It's people not being able to get back on the rolls. But when you look at the full picture, child care, kids being kicked off of off of Medicaid, um, the fact that we had a child tax credit that actually lifted kids out of poverty and then we could. What does it say about the state of priorities of the Republican Party that that none of those things they talk about being pro family, they talk about being, quote unquote, pro baby now that they know that pro life is not working for them as a moniker. And yet they cannot get behind these very simple and effective policies. 
Yeah, not not to mention we are currently negotiating the farm bill and they're trying to cut school lunch programs and healthy food programs for kids in that as well. You know, I think it's clear that Republicans like to say a lot of things, but at the end of the day, the only thing they care about is getting tax cuts for their wealthy donors and the big corporations who fund them and not about the American people, not about making the cost of living actually lower for the American people and certainly not helping America's children because if they did, it'd be clear that they'd be working with us to pass these common sense proposals that we have seen actually work.